folks, welcome on back. Today, we're going to be doing the next pack of the Zero Fighter. So this is pack two from Agora. So I really like these packs from Agora. We get so many things in here. So I think we have stages, uh, let's see, looks like stages six through, is it 15? I see 15, 13, 14. 14, maybe maybe through stage 14. Uh, we had a bunch of stages in the pack, so like it was a little tiny box, but there's a lot of parts in here. So, so here's what we have thus far. We have uh, the propeller, and we have parts of the engine, the radial engine for this uh, plane. We have already built up. We have some loose parts from the first five stages in pack one, and we have an engine cowling here that can actually easily come apart. It's actually held together with magnets, so we can actually show off this engine after it's done. And uh, yeah, this kind of gives me a good idea for my interior tanks, man. How cool would it be to put magnets, little tiny magnets, somewhere on the tank hull to be able to pull the parts on and off a little bit easier? Hmm, just a thought. Something to think about. Anyway, so, but I digress. Let's go ahead and get started. So this is pack six of Agora Zero Fighter. Like I said, we'll be doing pack six through, I think, or uh, stages six through 15. This is pack two. So this is the second month's box. And it uh, looks like we have some more engine parts here. So I see some more cylinder heads, just like we did in the last few. So let me just zoom in here a little bit. Because these parts are a little bit smaller, so you're going to be able to see them. We also have a little sprue of some other parts in here, which is interesting that we have a sprue on a uh, part work. Um, just interesting. I'm used to seeing sprues from my tanks all the time, of course. Um, let's see. So, this looks like it's a continuation of what we've done before. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take some super glue, which I have some thick, I, I like using thick super glue, it's a little bit easier to control. And we're actually just going to take these parts here and glue them together. Um, so again, this kind of looks just like this here because this this is one we did last time. So we're gonna just make them look like that real quick. So let me zoom in some more. You guys can get a good shot of this. So um, they re they really just snap together. It's really not too difficult uh, to snap these together. Um, we're just gonna put a little bit of glue in here just to hold them. Just a little dab. Just a little dab. And we're going to stick these together, just like that. It really is pretty simple. Uh, where was my other half? Here we go. Same thing here. Nothing too exciting yet. I do know that this this part work specifically has a lot of inner workings going on. Um, in terms of the controls and little servos and motors, which is actually why I picked it, because I was like, I'm, I'm interested in something a little bit more intricate, so see how that goes. Now, on top of this, uh, these two, when you say these and this, you get the southern draw of this. Um, I didn't mean to do that, but it happens. Now, uh, we have two different parts here. And basically one is a left and one's a right if you look at where the uh, lines connect to. So you want to be careful to make sure that those lines face outward, as in like away from the engine cylinder. So like in this case, this is a lefty. So this one will go, see it's a lefty there, this one's going to go right here. Uh, I did have one issue with, with one of these cylinders in the last pack that I remember where it didn't quite want to fit right. And this one here looks okay, but there's like, yeah, so if you can see that, there's a little burr right there. There's a little burr right there. And that little burr is blocking this from setting on there. Let me just show you again. I ran into this issue last time too. So, see that? So, we're just going to clean that off real quick. All we need is a trusty sanding stick. 
This is just a soft metal, so in a rough sanding stick will work just fine. And we're just going to file that away. Oop, like so. So we have a nice tilt. It's gone. Look at that. So it comes right off. Not a big deal. And we can put a little bit of glue down. And that's why you want to dry fit these first. Just in case you do come across any burrs like that. I had an issue on the last pack too with that. Just It was just one or two. It wasn't every single one. Um, I think it was more so specifically this this spot here. And now look at that. Nice flush. That looks really good. And we'll put the other one on. Put a little dab of CA there. And like I said, I like to use the thick stuff just because it's easier to control and it takes a little bit longer to dry. Put that on there and boop. Another engine cylinder. Okay, and that's what we're going to do to the other one as well. So, take notice, this one here, second one, still another slight burr. It seems to be specific to the ones with this protruding edge on here. So we'll just sand that off just like we did in the last one. We don't want to sand too much. Oh, come on, focus now. But you can see, just saying a little bit off there. We'll make it so it sits flush. <laughs> Go ahead and do this. Put it to have a CA. And remember, we want the one that's going to face outward, so that'll be this guy. Oop. And put that in place. There. If you need to add more CA, you always can pull that back off and try again, but it might just take a second for that to dry. Same thing over here. I, I haven't had many issues with this side. It was always that what, one side there that gave me a burr for whatever reason. So I'm pretty sure it's just something with the, the uh, molding process they do. So this one tight now. No? Okay. So because it's not tight, I'm just going to pull it off, put another dab of CA on there because obviously I didn't put enough on. And reattach it again. There we go. Uh, yeah, now we're holding. Okay, yeah, and there we go. We have another engine cylinder. So from here, we are going to be continuing to assemble this motor. So in this next step here, we do have to assemble, start assembling the second uh, part of the radial engine. So there's essentially two of these, okay? And if you take notice, there's A's and B's here. And then if we look here, there's an A. So we just made two more A sizes and they just drop right in like that. And all it's telling us to do is just drop them in. It doesn't, it just says, it specifically says don't glue them. So we're just going to drop these in place here for now and then set this aside. So there are little pegs here so we can just drop them in and they will, they'll hold on their own if you set them down but they'll, I mean they can pop out again and, but it's no big deal because they're not glued down. We're just going to set that down on the side and we're actually going to pull this big guy over. So this is the um, first half of the engine that we finished up during stage one, or stage one, pack one, sorry. Now we're going to be adding all of these um, these things on here, okay? So, I'm sorry, I, I don't know airplanes like I know tanks, so I apologize, I'm not sure what these things are called. But we're going to be putting these on the top here of these, uh, of this engine of these cylinder heads. So <clears throat> there's little pegs here. It looks like one, one peg is bigger than the other so we kind of can't screw it up and if we look the holes one's bigger than the other so they're all going to face like this on there so we're going to get those attached and the easiest way to do that is with a pair of side cutters. So I use this blue handled pair um, <clears throat> and these are the fine ones and the, the trick that I like to use is like you don't cut right here 
to start, you actually cut in a little bit further and leave a nub on there when you're cutting your parts off. And then you can kind of get a good angle to cut your parts. Let's take a closer look at this. If we can focus, camera, thank you. And then we can see how close we can get now because that sprue's out of the way. We can really see where we're at. And this only has a sharp blade on one side. You can see the other side's dull. Then you get a nice clean, crisp cut. And minimal sanding is required. I mean, you can usually give it like one quick pass if you want. But that's all it really needs. And you're sanded down after that. Which just saves a lot of time at this step. So then from here... We can just, I don't know if these snap, it doesn't say anything about gluing them. So, I'm assuming we can just snap fit them in. Let's take a look here, see how well they fit. It just, it just fits right in there. And, uh, okay, no, I think we're going to have to glue them because they don't really, yeah, they don't hold on. So, it, it doesn't mention in there about gluing them. It just shows them there so let's go ahead and put just a dab of CA on here tiniest little bit well I wasn't expecting a, that to happen but okay so then in this case yeah the big ones on this side so let's focus and pop that on there like so now that little dab of CA, that's going to hold that in place. At least I'm expecting it to anyway. doesn't seem to be doing it yet. That's definitely a loose fit. Come on camera. It sees the tank tracks behind me and keeps wanting to focus there. There we go. Yeah, that's still really loose. Okay, we're going to have to... We're going to have to try this a little bit differently. Two, what we're going to do... We're going to put some CA right here. set that down now with this thick CA the other thing too is it's gonna like kind of grab it right away and it'll, it'll you'll feel it kind of stick while it hardens so you can kind of tell if it's see there's a little bit of force required so I know it's sticking now we don't need a lot of CA we this is not going to be like a part that comes in contact with anything we just need to make sure it sticks and doesn't fall off when we just you know go like this it shouldn't fall off and yeah, it's sticking. So I'm going to do the same thing for all of these cylinder heads. Just, I'll, I'll do it here and then we'll come back. Alright, and with that, all those parts attached, that means stage 6 is complete. So we can set that aside for a moment. And we can grab stage 7. So we're continuing on the engine in this stage, I believe... Let me just zoom out here a bit for you guys. Stage 7 continues the engine. I believe by the end of this pack we will have the engine finished. So I see a pair of tweezers. That's interesting. It gave us a pair of tweezers. Go ahead and set them off to the side. We have... Uh, some more parts, uh, these are like, uh, I don't know if these are fuel lines, or, or which, these are lines for the engine, that, that much I know. Um, and then we have more cylinder heads to put together. So, I won't bore you guys with putting more cylinder heads together. So I will come back after these cylinder heads are put together. And actually, that's pretty much all there is in this stage, is putting the cylinder heads together, and they go with, uh, this motor piece here. So um, I'm just going to put these together. No sense in boring you guys seeing the same repetitive thing on, on this motor. Um, and I will be right back. Alright. And all of two minutes later we have two engines put, uh, well, cylinder heads I should say, put together. And um, these are, let me just zoom in here for a moment. Uh, as you've seen before, we have an A and a B. Alright, so these are a B, uh, um, A, B, no, 
These are a uh, B engine, so we can see B, sorry, I keep saying engine, cylinder. This is, this is an A. And the difference is that little nub we talked about before. So if you look here, there's no nub on the end like these A's have. So, and then these just set in place like so into the B slots. And then again, we're just going to set this off to the side. We need one more B cylinder because they didn't include it in this stage. And then this can actually start to get closed up. So that actually is the end of uh, stage seven, is to have these parts on the sprue still because we're gonna need this for the next stage or a future stage uh, coming up shortly. Um, and then I think they actually go, just look, cause here's our first one, right? So we're just building a second one. They go right in here. So we're gonna be attaching those just as we did on the first one. So I'm gonna set this off to the side. And let's go ahead and grab pack eight. Here we are. Zoom out. Okay. Just gonna move that over there. More sprues, so we have some more connecting pieces here to take a look at. These are some pretty small parts. Let me zoom back in. It's like there's a lot of parts to see, but it's hard to see these details. Oh, we even have some screws. All right, we have some screws, and these are not labeled, so we're gonna have to label those screws. Okay, and we have our last cylinder head, which is always nice to have. Oop, let's get you out of there. Okay, and then we have. Last well, parts, tops of our cylinder heads, more. Another sprue of more connecting, looks like connecting hoses, I should call them, or connecting lines. And then we have this is actually going to close up that engine. <clears throat> so, again, we're going to build up this cylinder head. We can do that real quick. Just to give you an idea. I mean, you guys have seen me do these uh, in other stages. You can see they're not very. Uh, hard to do, they're very quick. You just slapping them together. And remember that the hose lines on the cylinder head faces outwards. So just gonna do this with the last one real quick. And again, this is the B um, cylinder, so it doesn't have that little nub on. So I, I noticed that the B cylinders didn't have issues with the fitting Okay, as I say that, I have an issue with this one fitting right off the bat. What, oh, you know what it is? Because I have it turned the wrong way. See, they actually have a D-shaped pin on the bottom. And I had uh, just said, don't do uh, this where you put the this little nub sticking uh, inwards. That's the outward. I tried to stick it inwards, and it wouldn't let me. So good job, Agora, for preventing me from making a dumb mistake. Now, this one here right in there there we go now you can see we have cylinder heads are facing outwards now with that being built we can set it in place with the rest of these sitting off on the side here okay and it just goes here in this B slot like so let me do that okay I'll help you guys out a lot and there we go now we have one completed uh, engine with all of its heads on there. And the next thing this actually has us doing is it has us putting them next to the hole. Well, that's interesting. So we're not putting them down in place yet. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to pull them back out and we're going to mount these little guys on them so again this is all going to be using CA glue so just pull these all out like so it says to set them next to where they're going to go so that's why we want to kind of leave this all here like like this we don't want to completely just pull them apart and throw them off on the side we want to actually keep them oriented how they're going to go into this center mounting block 
then what we're going to do is we're going to glue these rods to the hole um, I think what it's what it's trying to show here is that we're going to put them in these holes on the side right so we have these little holes on the side we're going to put them there on every single one that's what it's showing me so and that's what the picture looks like as well yep that's where they're going simple enough so then in the end what we're going to have is a giant circle with they're all we're all going to be connected that's what i'm seeing so with these with these little parts okay because they're kind of a little nub and it might not necessarily be well it won't be a part in this case that we're going to see we can actually just take our side cutters and we can cut them right against that nub just because um, that nub's not going to be seen that's just meant to give us a, a bonding point so we're just going to cut all these off nothing exciting here but we can just cut them off very gently let them fall on the workbench and then we'll start connecting them and we're going to pick one side here and just work our way around so in this case we'll just we'll just start here with this one and we will just put a dab of CA right there on that connecting point then we will take our little connecting rod Oop. let's use gravity to our advantage by holding it vertical like so or at least as close to vertical as you can get it so we want to try to get it as vertical as possible just kind of letting it dry for now and then what we're going to do is we're going to set this down into our, our mounting block here and then um, I mean it, it kind of shows you attaching them off of the thing but I think it would be better while the glue is drying to drop the next one in and attach it it just makes the most sense to me because once that glue is dry you're kind of done for and that's this is again why you probably want to have the thick CA like I'm using because it it gives you plenty of setup time you can see I'm still able to wiggle this thing quite a bit so I don't know how well that's coming through that you can see it but we need to snap this in place if we can get it to go Whoop. well we just completely came out okay so that didn't work There's, there's not a lot of wiggle room between these two parts. I'm almost going to have to snap them in there. Oof, but it just does not want to go. So it does say about trimming them to make them fit. Come on now. But I know plastic well enough for my plastic kits. This should snap right in. There we go. I know plastic well enough it should snap right in place. Now, at this point, can we start gluing them down? Okay, so I, I think I think at this point we can start gluing these down. I guess I should I should put a dab of CA in there. Um, so we know that fits, so it's no big deal um, now. So I just wanted to to show you guys. That's make sure. You know, but that's how it was going to work. So now what we're going to do, I'm just going to put a dab of CA in here. There's no reason at this point that we should be pulling these cylinders back out. So let's put that in place with the dab of CA. Put the next one in. Again, just a little dab of CA to hold it. And then we will put just another dab here. Yep. and snap that back in like we just had it because we know it can do it come on now there we go snap that in place and boom now there's CA on both these cylinders holding them onto the, the mounting block 
and then we also have those lines connecting there that looks good all right then what we're going to do is just do that the whole way around so rather than me boring you by showing you the same exact thing over and over again i'm just going to take a break here and um, we'll do the rest of this engine and what it'll look like uh, again it's just the cylinders with uh, the lines connected throughout the whole thing okay so I have all of these uh, lines in place except for the last one so we have to go in between these two and one of the things you want to do at this stage is you want to put a little CA on, on both ends both there and there and what we're going to do is just kind of come in at an angle Kind of like you did on the first one. But you can see there's not a lot of room there, right? So one of the things we can do is just take our nippers let's, or, or a knife or something and we're just going to cut off just a little tiny bit on the end. So we have a piece that's trimmed. You can see I just cut the nub off the end of this guy on the top here. And then we still still a little long but the thing of it is these actually can seat inside of these cylinder heads if we can get their angles just right come on work with me here and we can kinda bend them into place we might have to trim this again I think I might not have taken enough off you, you know you know how it is kinda guess trim a little bit test fit what you don't want to do is take too much off and then have a gap. So a little bit more off. Let's actually stick that end in first. Yeah. That looks like we got a good amount. So now we can just push that into place. And there's already some CA in there. And there we go. Get that last piece on there. I did notice that a few of them actually seated inside of the cylinder head. Now this one here is not doing it. Okay. I'm just going to put another little dab of CA on this end. It's a very tight fit, so it can be a little fiddly. There we go. Just to make sure that holds. And there we go. One completed engine piece. And these are all glued into place. And that is, I believe, let's just double check here. Okay, once that's done, okay, so we're actually not done with this stage, that's good, I like longer stages. So the next step is to take this piece here that we have, and we're going to set it over top of these parts to actually hold them in place, just like so. I put that little dab of CA in there to help hold them while I was putting these around. So you don't have to glue them in, because this will hold it, but I definitely recommend putting a little dab of CA on each one of these cylinders as you put them down so they don't so you don't attach this and like flop out or something on you. I would definitely recommend that. And then they gave us some screws to attach this with. It's the only screws in the in the in this step, which is really nice. Nice and easy. You don't have to get anything confused. Alright, so going to take our screwdriver. Now this is metal on metal, so we are going to use some 3-in-1 oil that I have over here. And we are just going to dip the end of the screw in there. And we are going to attach this right here. And once this is on, then we're actually going to attach the same uh, parts that we attached on the first part of the engine. Uh, the first set of cylinder heads, we are going to attach. Oh, come on now. We're going to attach those next. These, uh these these parts here we're going to attach these next so same as the uh, first engine so we actually do have enough of the connecting arms to attach uh, to the, everything to the first engine as well so I have a feeling we're going to be doing that here shortly as well alright so I'm all squared away now so we have this is the 
cylinder uh, cylinders that we put together in pack one and you can see we have these uh, lines on there but we don't have the connecting lines in between each cylinder and this is mounted. Now the one thing is I did notice they uh, I did not glue these into place they're actually loose in here whereas I glued these um, so that's okay that we did that the next step is to actually put in the same uh, connecting lines as we have here these ones that are elbowed we're going to put them uh, right here on each cylinder and then after that we're going to take this guy back apart and put in the connecting lines in between each one so um, we're going to start with uh, these parts here just because this is a little bit easier and actually is the next st step in the uh, instructions is to, to cut all these off and there's seven of these because there's seven cylinders so if it looks like there's one missing uh, oh wait there's eight there's eight but there's seven cylinders so you'll you should have an extra one left um, so we're just going to cut these off and one of the things you can do is if, if they're too long um, so if you look here these nubs or say yeah so this end here if it's too long we can always just cut that end off for whatever reason so these are just going to set in here like so again we did this in the last pack but just to show you they go right here and they just sit right in place and then you can just put a davisier on the end to make them stick and like I said if they're too long you can always cut them down but that one fit in there perfectly so no issues there so I'm gonna put all these in and then be right back I actually just wanted to show you guys a little trick when you have something like this uh, where you, you can actually apply the glue right to the handles I use this trick when I do grab handles on my tanks even though these kind of press fit in, if you just want to make sure they're secure, I put a little bit of CA in this uh, paint dish that I now have deemed as my super glue dish, and I use this to just dip it in there, uh, dip the part in there, and then stick it in place. And it makes it just so much easier to simply uh, attach those parts. So just a little dish like this here, put your CA in there. A metal dish preferably, because then it'll... Uh, it'll last a little bit longer it won't dry out so fast so all right with that we have this completed set we have all the connecting lines in place Whoop. all the connecting lines in place and looking good so we're going to set this aside and then we're going to take this guy and we're going to attach everything um, and do the, do the connecting lines in between here so the instructions say to pull this apart take these screws out pull it apart and then it, it connect all these which we can definitely do although I'm, I'm honestly considering leaving them in place not out of laziness but because of the fact that I'm gonna have to put them back in one by one anyway like I did on the first one and what I found worked best is actually you know you can put it in place to set the next cylinder down but you still have to wedge it in so there's really no benefit that I saw to having glued in, glued you know let's say glue this piece in here and then put this cylinder in place and line it up. I really don't see any difference between just having it in place already. I don't notice any difference. So I'm going to go ahead and glue all these in. And I'm going to use the same trick. Rather than putting the glue on the cylinder head, we're going to use our little dish here of CA, dip our part in, and then just set it in place. Now that you can see kind of ahead of time, some of these are going to be a little too long. Um, specifically the ones between the A's and the B's I noticed where the seem to be the treble ones so um, you definitely want to watch out for those for whatever reason they just seem to be closer together I don't know why but that's just how it seemed to be to me so we can set these in place snap them in and then we can add CA to the other side too of course as needed making sure they fit first and again you're gonna have to kinda like whoop there it went snap it in snap it into place like so, yeah, look at that. Some of them pop right into place like that, and it's real nice and easy. Other ones, it's not always so easy. I don't know if it's just because of slight variations or whatnot, but like here, this one looks really long, but maybe it won't be. But like I said, whether you take this apart or not, you still have to do this part where you kind of snap them into place. Actually, look at that. They come in together really, really well if you come in from the bottom, I think. I think that's a trick. Because they're kind of angled, if you look here. They're kind of angled this way. So if you come up from the bottom, 
it works pretty well. So, I'm not saying you can't follow the instructions that tell you to tear it apart, but I'm thinking that it almost seems like it's easier to uh, to do it once it's already together. Especially considering the way the way the instructions show you to do it, it doesn't say anything about gluing the cylinders in place, and that could become a real pain in the butt if you're trying to hold them in and put this connecting line. When I say connecting line, it's just because I I'm assuming. Oh come on. Oh, and that's how you break one of the heads off, or the lines. They're a little fiddly. So I think this is one of the ones where we're going to have to shorten it up a little bit. So what we're going to do is take a pair of nippers or something, and just quickly cut that there before we break it anymore. They do give you one extra line, so if you do break one, don't worry about it. Agora does cover you, and that they give you an extra one. So, so actually you have two extras for these motors. We're going to try to put this in place as is. We'll straighten that out and apply some CA. Once we get her in place. Okay, it's just, it just this one just wants to break. I think what we're going to do is, is scrap this one. I think what we're going to do is grab another one and trim it first. Because clearly, I said between A's and B's, is where you have the biggest issue and we're definitely there so let's take see now that one's too short well I guess we just burned up two of them didn't we um, alright let's try this again because we don't have too many more of these to play with I think I just trimmed it too short that first one my, my knife slip I should have used my nippers and yeah, that looks really good. So, just gonna put that in place now. Come in from the bottom, like I mentioned before. There we go. Look at that. It snaps right into place wherever we want it. And if you have any issues with it not uh, drying fast enough or what have you, you can always hit it with some CA accelerator. I used a little. Uh, blunt needle for it just to get it into place without it sticking or uh, not having to use that awful spray um, apparently I moved where I was working at that might have had something to do with why I had an issue yeah because that one's a little a little short okay so yeah we're gonna have to trim another one I realized I somehow spun this thing while I was talking because I'm like oh, that doesn't look right Let's try putting one of these in here. Yeah, that's coming in real nice. For whatever reason, it seems like some of them are shorter than others, and I don't know. I don't really understand why. I really don't. I don't know. Th these are all trimmed too short now. It's incredible. This one here seems like it needs a long one though. So let's put this one here since we. We're seeing that this one definitely needs a longer one. Oop. Come on now. There we go. Snaps right into place. All right, so we still have two more, and we and that's because we ruined two, and we still have two left. So we're good. So like I said, they give you one extra per engine so there's you need seven per engine and they give you uh, eight so you have one extra we're just gonna trim these off see how we can put these in place so they're a little bit long let's just see what we can do here come on now fit in here So I don't want to snap one again, so that's why we're going to be very careful here. Just want to try to get it. You 
if we can get it to flex. There, there we go. See if we can get it to flex just enough, it'll pop right into place. I always have one more. I want to say this is the one that hurt us the first time because it's pretty darn close. Okay. Or maybe I just screwed up. Who knows? All right, let's come in from the bottom again. This trick seems to work the best. Let's just get it. There we go. Look at that. I didn't even have to trim that one. That's crazy. Maybe they're different lengths too. I don't know. Either way, there it is. Completed. All the way around. And now we have two parts that are completed. And we didn't have to tear this thing apart, which is a nice convenient trick. All right. All right, with uh, that would be stage eight complete. We have two completed cylinders here. Uh, actually, one of them's missing uh, some parts here. If we look here, the one on my right hand. So we're missing this this piece over here. So we're gonna attach that, I'm sure, in the next stage. Actually, I can see we're gonna do that in the next stage. The next stage is pretty short. Um, we do have still some parts that are sitting here not being used yet, just as an FYI. You will have some unused parts you're gonna have to kind of keep track of and set aside. Very important to do so. And we do have one extra screw so far. So, that being said, let's go on to pack number nine. Okay, so in this pack, Let's just zoom out of here, here, so you guys can see what I'm doing. Because opening packages is like having Christmas every day. At least it seems to feel that way some days. It's like every day I come home and there's an Amazon package or package from one of my favorite hobby stores, one of my many favorite hobby stores, because they're all my favorite. Um, it's just like it's like having Christmas every day of the year. So anyway. So we have what looks like a piece of the front of the plane, the engine. Again, I'm no plane expert, but something tells me that this is probably on the front of the engine, uh, probably where the propeller attaches, something like that, or close to it. And then this part seems to line up really well with this part, so I'm assuming they're going to go together. But we're going to set those off to the side for now, because I can see in this short one that we're not going to be doing um, much with those parts. What we are going to be doing is attaching these pieces to the engine part that we do not have them attached to. So that's all we're going to be doing in this stage. Uh, this is stage number nine. Um, and we're going to be attaching these. So we're just going to cut them off and glue them fast. And that's as simple as it's going to be. So with these being glued fast, that'll be stage nine complete and we'll be moving on to stage ten. Now again, um, I'm not going to bore you guys by having you watch every step of this but essentially all we're going to do is we're going to put a dab of CA on um, the engine here so just in the middle here on top just a little dab of CA uh, let me zoom in you can see how little of a dab I'm talking all right it's not it's just a little bit Oop. how's that yep just a little bit and then just put that in place and you get to wiggle it around till you get the holes lined up. There's a big hole and a little hole, so you really can't screw it up. And you just set that into. Come on. Work with me. There we go. And boom. I have that part. Do that to all the other six, and I'll be right back. Alright, and with that, stage nine is complete. We're going to move on to stage ten. So let's go ahead and grab that out and set these parts off on the side. Zoom out of here and stage 10. Like I said, I think we have, yeah, we have up to stage 15 in here. So these Agora packs give you plenty to do. I mean, you build up the thing in a year, um, 10 packs, or 12 packs, I'm sorry, um, and they give you plenty of stuff to do in each pack, which is kind of nice. So we have oh, another one of these parts for the engine. So it looks like we're still building the engine. We got a pack of screws and some more little parts. Not really sure what those are, but we'll find out here shortly. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to take a part that we used, or well, got way way long ago. Um, this part here, I think this is the exhaust or at least part of the exhaust, I believe. This is the exhaust setup. 
so this part here is going to go with this part here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this this long piece through this slot here. It's just going to go in like so. And if you take notice, let me just zoom in here. You can kind of see there's two pegs here. These line up with these two holes. So we're just going to slide that through there and push it on through and snap it onto them pegs. And there we go. And um, well, that's all, folks. <laughs> that's stage 10. So, so these part works, some of these stages are super short, so they give you a couple of parts. So like we got these extra parts here. We got a whole bag of screws, but we didn't even use them. Um, so we we didn't glue this part in either, just as a side note, this is not glued. It's just snapped in, as you saw. That's it for stage 10. So we have a couple extra parts. So the nice thing is, though, I mean, at least from what I've seen so far with this, uh, with this build, is that um, even though we're storing parts, they're not like super tiny parts, and they're also being used pretty quickly. I mean, there was a few parts we didn't use yet, but um, I can tell you that some of the parts we just got we're going to be using in this pack. So we got them in the last stage, I should say, not pack stage, and we're going to use them now. So this is stage 11 now, and we actually have a little motor in here. So we're going to pull this part. Moving on to stage 11, and we're actually going to use the parts that we just got in the last stage for this. So, again, just a little motor. We have our what is it, size millimeter plug that is. It's like a headphone jack kind of thing. A little motor, electric motor. Let's throw that off on the side there. Okay. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take these two parts that we got in the last um, stage. And these are actually going to go together uh, like so, but with the motor inside of it. So that's our motor housing. So we're going to take these two parts here and we're just going to set them inside with uh, the motor. So the motor just sets in there. And then let's see how we want to route these wires. So let's just make sure that, because as you see here, we have two wires that we need to make sure aren't in the way of anything. So we're just going to make sure those aren't in the way of those two little screw holes. And then this part here is going to sit down. If you look on the back of this little plug, there's two little slots and there's two little pegs right there. So we're going to set that right down in there. We're not gluing anything, at least not that I know of. Nope, no glue. We're going to be screwing this together and that's why we want to make sure that we have our wires out of the way. Um, Okay, so this is a little fiddly. I want to get these wires like down in here so they're out of the way. The last thing we want is wires in the way. Um, okay, well there is a top half to this and I guess we'll see because it has us putting it on this side which is correct. Just trying to fit those down in there. in a way that they won't be in the way when we put the cover on. I'm almost wondering if I should like... I don't want to keep twisting the wires to take up slack, but I'm not sure how else to... or, or break that contactor off. That could be the other... I don't want to break anything by twisting wires and whatnot because... that wire almost looks as if it's ready to like bust off already. It's not on there super super strong so I'm gonna be very very careful here set that down like so okay let's try this see this is what I'm looking at is these pins like aren't lined up or something and they should be There. That's why I wanted something to like hold it while I kind of got them into position or finagled them or whatever. Let's try a little bit of plier action, something a little bit more force. Yeah. 
See, the, the, the nubs just weren't lined up. It wasn't the wires there towards the end. It was in the beginning, but it was just the wires at the end there. So now we have everything in position. That screw helped us out a lot. Okay. We tighten this second screw down. And then the next step we're going to do is take that cone, which I, I want to say looks like the nose cone. I said I'm no engine or, or uh, airplane expert, but this piece goes into this piece. And that's actually what's going to make our engine go, or engine go, our propeller go. Let's see, am I right? Yeah. That's just going to attach like so. Yeah, and there it is. There's the little shaft for the motor coming out. Very good. Okay, and there's that part. Okay, and then we can just set that down. We're finally using some of these old parts from forever ago. So I want to see, make sure, because it shows us using these parts. Okay, so these two parts are different. They look the same, but they're, they are different. So the part we want is this guy, and we're going to attach it to this guy. So we have three holes, three pins. Gonna attach it like so. And we are gonna glue it. Actually, I'm gonna put a dab of CA on there and we're going to glue it fast. Just like that. Now this stuff is like a really soft, almost like rubbery stuff. You can see how easily they move. So I don't know how well these are gonna stick with CA. So just to be careful, whoa. On the safe side, we're gonna hit that with some kicker to make sure they dry instantly in place. Okay. And then the next step is to actually take the nose cones. You can see how these kind of fold back and it shows them that you can fold them back. I think these are all going to attach to the cylinders here in a moment. But for now, we're going to put this part here, the nose cone, into this guy. So let's see how he sits in there. Oh, there's a gap here. So there's a, there's a gap here for this guy. So we're just going to slide that in, I think, yep, like so, come on now, work with me, please, please slide into place, okay, I think it might be because of the fitment issue I had earlier, so, I'm talking to my camera for the 10,000th time. Now I have to edit that out, but thanks, dear. Jeez. I told you that this morning when you got up. All right, there we go. Now we got that through there. Like so. And this does not get glued. We're just going to set it here because it doesn't get screwed into place. So you can see we're going to set that right up against the front there. It snaps right into place. Beautiful fit. Snaps right in. And then what we're going to do on the back side here, there's two screw holes. We're going to put two screws in there. Now again, these are plastic on plastic, so we don't need any 3-in-1 oil. We're just going to grab some screws out of the baggie and pop them in place. Like so. And this, I'm assuming, is eventually going to attach into our, our engine. So I think out of this pack, we're going to have a completed engine, which I'm all for. I, I like the idea of you know a part work where you get parts, they come in, they all get attached to the model, and there's nothing left over extra. Because to me, it's like, okay, wh why bother? sending parts in a stage just for me to store them between stages like 
I don't mind if it's in the same pack, that doesn't bother me as much, but when it's like, you know, on my R2 build, I, I, I built something in like, um, stage 9, and I'm not going to use it till stage 50, it's like, okay, what's the point of that? Like, come on. Anyway. So that's that part. The next step, we're going to take our assembly from stage 9, which I, oh gosh. Are these identical? They look identical. I'm pretty sure they're identical. Oh wait. Yeah. Are they? They look identical. I hope they are because... Oh no, it does say check assembly stage 8 and 9. They're similar. So... Oh gosh. How do you tell these two apart? I think it has something to do with the angles in here. Oh wait, no. Okay, no, no, look here. So, you can see the edges of the cylinder here from this side with the screws. And on this side you don't. Okay, so there's no, see the difference there? So, this actually has more of a, of a block in the middle than this does. It's kind of recessed. So we want to make sure we use the block that is not recessed. We want to use this one. No, wait. No. Okay, no. This this one goes on first, then this one. So, let's just check something here. Yeah, I'm specifically looking on the sides with the screws because that's what it shows me in the picture. This is from stage 9, this is from stage 8, so that's important to note, because it says take the assembly from stage 9 and insert it to the assembly from 3, alright, so from step 3, so we're going to take this and we are going to attach this part to it, so looks like there's really, I don't know if there's really only one way to do it. Should fit right over top of there. And if it doesn't, then maybe I have it the wrong way. So I think one side's, yeah, one side's a little bit bigger than the other. Here we go, let's try it this way. Okay. I'm just gonna slide that over top of that. Yeah, it's going. So we know this is right. So one side is a little bit differently shaped than the other side. So that's important to note. If we can continue sliding down this, it'd be great. There we go. Continuing down. All right, there. Slide that in. Looks good. Okay. Oh boy. All right, so that's this step, and then the, the well, in the same step, we're going to take this guy, same exact thing, and with the screws facing the same direction to so take notice, the screws are facing away from the uh, nose cone, and we have the screws facing this way, same thing. We're just going to slide that over top of the shaft, like so. Look at that. Yeah, so there is, it is important because then you have your uh, cylinders lining up differently, which makes sense. You'd have to have them offset. Okay. So now comes the really fun part. So we get to insert the, all these ends into place. Oh my gosh. There's a nice, there's a very nice chart they give us to explain uh, exactly where they go. I'll show that to you here. So they do, they do a great job. Agora does a great job with their callouts, so we can see exactly where each hose goes, which is really nice. We can also see the attachment points underneath. So it looks like um, I, don't, I don't know if we're going to need glue. They might just snap it into place, but we might put a dab of CA on. So I'm going to do one for you, and then we'll kind of just go from there. So let's take a look here. So let's just, oh gosh, there's a lot going on here. So we have these shorter ones like so, longer ones coming out right in the same exact spot. And then we have, um, if we look underneath, we have the, this 
part that's straight. So I don't think this at all. That's just kind of there. That, that straight part that was in between there, uh, which, which looks like this. Um, it's just kind of in there. If you can see that underneath everything, there is a piece. It's just coming up. It just kind of sits there. I don't see an attachment point, so that's fine. So what we have is these short ones, these short little guys, they're going to attach in um, these holes here that we see facing us. So all the little guys are going to go here. So essentially it's like this one here uh, should go down here. And uh, this one here should go here. And these are these are actually they're like like a rubbery thing, so we actually can put them in without glue. They just sit right into place like so. Um, I guess it's, so the short ones go here. Let's shove that guy down in there. You're gonna need a tweezers for this step for sure, just to get that to sit down in there. But oop, assuming you don't stab them with your tweezers, they should actually stick inside the the cylinder. Okay, I might have to use some CA on that one there. Or maybe clean up that hole. I don't know. Either way, this one doesn't want to go in. Or it does. There we go. At least it seems like it's in anyway. And then these longer ones, uh, they're going to go around to the front side. So, for example... Um, this one here is going to come around to, let's see, I think it's these, these little holes here. So we have these big holes, but I don't think those get, those get filled with anything in this case. Okay. Yep, it doesn't, yeah, it definitely shows it going in that middle one. So just every cylinder gets one of those in the back side of it. So again, for example, let's use this same cylinder. So I guess one of these would go, let's see, if we do it to the right, let's stick to the right. So we'd have, because you'd want them to all connect kind of the same way. So this one here is going to wrap around and go in here just stick it in there like so that rubbery material makes it really easy to just kind of shove it in there um, and it does kind of show it being routed up over that engine there yeah like so and then take this other longer one and then this one's going to come all the way down to here and then get connected here. So if you want to throw some thin CA on here, I, I don't think it would be a bad idea just to make sure it sticks. I just know CA and like rubbery stuff doesn't always work really well. Can be a thing. So, okay, I'm gonna have to stick that in there using some creativity because thing it is it's like it's just long enough to get over there so let me hold this end here kind of like bend it around and get it in that little hole sometimes they want to fit and sometimes they don't okay I think we're going to try the CA Let's just put a dab on the end here. And then a nice little trick you can do is, is put just a little bit of accelerant where you're going to place the part. And then stick it fast and it should immediately take, or within a few seconds, it should take Interestingly enough, all I did was put a little bit of glue on it, and it's like sunk right down in that spot, so. Are you going to stick? It's 
So like I said, CA doesn't always work really well with silicone type parts. Let's put a little bit more of this stuff on there to make sure it hardens up real quick. That does appear to be holding, so there's just one example. So then we have to do that throughout the entire engine. So uh, we'll come back after that. So a quick note after playing around with this for a little bit is, uh, first of all, I noticed that the longer ones actually get routed underneath these hoses here. So you want to go around and route them all first and line them up to a specific motor or motor, sorry, specific cylinder. And the other thing is start on like this end of this piece and work your way around counterclockwise to do so because where I started I now have to actually use some debonder and take some of those super glued parts out because these are not in the right place. They're actually off by one cylinder. So um, I would suggest that you start by lining everything up first. Um, like I said, starting here and working counterclockwise and putting everything, lining everything up, putting it in place, matching it to a cylinder, and then start attaching. Just so you don't make the same mistake I did here, then now I have to go undo. So, just a note on that, I'm gonna fix this up. And with that, gentlemen, we have a completed engine. At least this part of it anyway. Everything's piped in. So what I found that worked the best was I did everything along the front, just like I said, starting at this point, working my way counterclockwise. <laughs> started at this point, worked my way counterclockwise, uh, doing the front, and then I went to the back to do all the parts that loop around, and just C8 everything in place. Just a little dab of some CA, put it in place just to hold it, and it looks pretty good. Looks like a nice, well piped engine. Everything in place where it's supposed to be. Now, one of the things I would like to do once we get further along in the build is uh, add a little bit of uniqueness to this. So, we'll probably be putting a little bit of engine grime on this. For those of you that are not new to my channel, you know I like to weather things, so we'll definitely be weathering this airplane up a little bit putting a little bit of engine grime on there and whatnot I think it'll give it a nice touch so it's not so shiny anyway that's that stage done so actually one thing to note on this is like these little pieces that are in here these uh, arms sticking up we have to make sure that they are centered uh -huh. I'm talking to the camera no. <laughs> So we're just going to nub them, or nudge them if we can, over so they're aligned. If we can do that without breaking anything. You just want to get them lined up. See how these are like, these are lined up with the cylinder. We just want them all to be lined up, not sticking out, so they don't look funny. They don't need to be perfect, just need to be close so it doesn't look weird. And then what we're going to do, the reason I bring that up is because this actually was not the end of the stage we actually have this back piece to put on as well this piece here so we're going to attach this piece like so over top of that engine spin it into place hold on so we actually have to pull it back to spin it because there's all these wires in place now let's use our tweezers here there we go we're going to snap that into place See how they all line up kind of with the cylinder heads. We just want to make sure they're all lined up. If there aren't any funny looking ones. And then once that's on there, um, there's a place for a screw, but we don't screw it fast. So it doesn't say anything about us screwing this fast. So we're just going to snap this in place. Um, I mean, It looks like there's some screw holes here to mount fast later. So we have that, and then we're just going to hold that there. This... Uh, it actually says to glue the four holes from this. Okay, so we have these little nubs that we had on these A-type ones earlier. A-type cylinders. And they actually line up with this here. So, let's see here. So the flat part of this goes on top where this is to kind of give us our bearings a little bit. So then, let's just dry fit this, then we'll put some glue on. So it looks like, no wait. 
Yeah. This corner here goes right above the center there, so it goes right there. And then it spins like so. I shouldn't say spins, it just goes around like so. And hopefully everything lines up. So... There we go. Just snapping everything on there. Alright, so that seems to line up. This side seems a little bit off, but I think it just needs a little bit of wiggle. Uh, there should be plenty of wiggle room there. For it to, I mean, it's lined up, so I've just got to glue it fast. So what I'm going to do, since it's already in place, is just take some real thin CA. And we're just going to put a little dab in there. And that will, through capillary action, go right into the joint. Real nice and easy. And then... If there's any excess, you can just grab a, like a Q-tip or a cotton bud, whatever you like to call it, and you can just go near the edge and soak that up so you don't get any extra that you don't want. And then that now officially is that stage complete. So we have almost an... I mean, the engine looks like it's built to me. We just need to be able to put everything on the outside of it. So uh, I'm assuming this is where the cowling's going to go. And I think, if I remember right, there's mounted guns up here, so... It looks pretty good. I mean, what do you guys think? Alrighty, on to pack 12. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. This looks like we have a battery pack in here, along with some more parts for the engine. What looks to be some exhaust pipes, finally. Rounding out this engine. Alright, let's open this up. Throw that off to the side, that off to the side. We're gonna need some triple A's. And we're going to need, well, some instructions to see what we do with these things. But this here is going to be our little tester throughout this build as to how we test things like this motor. Because we have <clears throat> this little connector here, which will actually connect to our motor. Uh, it's kind of like a headphone jack. We can test it. So, kind of a nice use. Alright, let's get our instructions out and check this out. All right, so in this stage, we're going to take this part, which we've had from the beginning. Uh, we just added a part to it here in the last stage. Let me just zoom in a hair for you guys. All right, we're going to take uh, this part and this ring we just got here. And uh, this is all part of the exhaust uh, tube structure. So there are some holes here. A hole there, there, and over here. And then we also have, um, oh, actually we have a couple different holes, but we have matching pegs over here. So there's like, here's something to point out. There's two close ones here and then two close ones there. So we're going to actually glue these into place. Um, but just to show you here, we'll dry fit them real quick. They should pretty much snap right into place here. And there we go snap right in. We could even put a little dab of thin CA if we wanted to on these. Might even actually be a good idea just because they're fitting pretty well right off the bat. Just snapping right in to place there. It's actually a hole. Look at it. There's a hole back here too so we can actually we can put a dab of CA in there if we wanted to. So taking our real thin stuff just put a dab inside there to make sure it holds. I don't see any reason it would fall out, but hey, better safe than sorry, right? So we'll do that. Let's put a little dab on each one. And this is really thin stuff, CA, nothing fancy. Just something that'll actually soak in there real easy. And then that's it for this stage. So we have two of our exhaust pipes. We have our engine that we built over the last few stages. And we have the beginning of our exhaust um, structure here so that's it for this stage we have our tester and we can move on to stage 13 so that is this stage here we have stage 13 so let's go ahead and cut this open I see a lot more exhaust parts in here 
and a few other little black parts. Oh, which look like flaps that go on the end in cowling. So I'm sure someone knows what those are called. Let's see. I'm not really sure. Do, 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 do. Either way, we have these panels here to attach. So we can go ahead and pull all that out. You know what? We won't pull it out gingerly here. Just dump it out onto the workbench. Let's get them parts out. We also have a little baggie of screws. So that's everything in stage 13. So what we're going to do in this stage, direct going to grab this part. This is a metal part that we got very early on in the build. And we're finally going to actually do something with it which is always nice because I don't like having loose parts laying around and specifically if we take a look here you can see this side has two notches this side does not it has two injector pin marks but no notches so we're going to have this flat side facing up and we're going to take these panels which are labeled um, with letters on the back if I zoom in here you guys can see this So we have E, and this is a C. So there's D, B, and I bet this one's A. Hot diggity it is. All right, so uh, how I foresee this, well, at least how it's showing it here, I should say. So I don't have foresight. So we have B, C, D, and E. Those are the ones we want lined up uh, in that order. So B... You guys can see this. B has D, E, and C lined up like that. And then what we're going to do is flip them this way and attach them right along here. One, two, three, four. That should be B, C, D, E. And uh, these, these do not get glued in. Do not glue them because they do open and close. So these just sit in here like so. So there's actually like a little hinge spot for them to set in. You can really see it here. I put my finger behind it. You can see a little uh, hinge point for them. So these are going to hinge on there. So we're just going to put the rest of these on here like so. What's up with that one? Got a little bit of flash or something on it. Kind of looks like it's got some flash on it. It does. That one's got a little bit of flash there on the end. You can see that. Let me just put that in the back. I think he's messing with my camera. There we go. So we're just gonna give this a quick pass. Get rid of that flashing. And let's see. If it doesn't look better, we can always paint this later. Yeah. Just looks like a little bit of flashing. And actually, as I sand it, I think there's, I think this is painted black because it's kind of turning a grayish color there. So anyway, let's go back to where we were. So we put B in place, and these are just setting in here. Then C, which we just cleaned some of the flashing off. D, set that there. And then uh, E which is this guy here, we're just going to set this right here. At least I think, yeah, that should go down in there, right? Yeah, there we go, like so. And then the next step is to take, now that we have that in place, um, so you kind of see how they're hanging. It shows us basically turning this so we can hold it this way. That's all. I'm just going to turn it. And then we have this, this little piece here. This is actually going to attach over top of them and um, hold them in place for us. So again, so they can pivot. So if we take notice here, there's some humps here, if you will. Get a, can we catch the light? You can kind of see the, the top has a positive hump and then 
negative on the inside. So the inside is what we want to face down. We're just going to place that over top of those parts we just put in place, and that's going to give them some security there. It sets right into place like so. You can see that. So now if I move these, they still move freely, right? So then <clears throat> the next step is going to be to screw them in place with some of these screws that we just got. So we have this little baggie of tiny screws here, which I probably should have opened first. Now I gotta do this whole thing where I hold this and open these at the same time using my other fingers because I don't like repeating the same steps. Oh boy, can we do it? Oh gosh, I don't have small enough fingers. There we go. I got it. Okay. Just dump them out. Okay. Usually they give us one extra, so if you see, like in this case, four little screws, you're probably going to use three of them. And you can set the other one off on the side, it's a spare. And we're just going to put these in place and hope that my screwdriver doesn't bite me. Come on now. Oh, I had that one so perfectly in place with the tweezers. The magnetic uh, screwdrivers are like a, they're a good thing and a bad thing. They're good if you hit just center on a screw that's in place. Okay, now I feel better. Do that and we'll do this end here just so. Oop. Come on, there we go. Put that in place. And we got this guy here. So we are screwing into metal. I did not put any 3 in 1 oil on here. You can see they're still going in pretty smooth. These are little screws, they're not so big. And now we're just going to snug them up. We don't want to make them super tight because we want these to be able to move, but we don't want them to be super loose because we don't want these things like flapping around when we turn the propeller on later. Right, so we want these to just be snug in place. And then from there, um, we should have the letter A. This piece here is going um, to go, let's see, it says turn this over. And the letter A is going to go right here. And that goes right here. My understanding is this part doesn't move. It actually does tell us to glue this in place. So we're going to do that real quick. We're just going to put a little bit of glue on the end of that guy. So just a little bit. Of, again, I use thick CA for stuff like this. We're going to use just a little dab of that on the end and then we're going to go ahead and just put that in place so it looks like from what I can tell there's also like a little stopper here I mean you could glue it against that but it just says to glue the pin so we're going to leave it at that for now just make sure that glues in place and then all this if we close it right because it's on a hinge should all line up pretty darn close and it does look like it does close up nicely there So we're going to hit that with just a little bit of accelerator, so we don't have anything moving around. All right, and now, oh, maybe not. Almost ready. Okay, yeah, there we go. Now we're not moving. Good. Not moving anymore, so that's good. All right, now, at this point now, we have this part. Made. I think this goes in the back of the engine cowling. I think it's going to match up on the back here. And the cowling goes over top of it. Because um, if we look, here is our engine cowling. And this should go eventually right here. And look at there. It actually does fit. So I mustn't be too far off. And then, yep, we can see that it moves. And that's where it'll be fitting eventually not right this second but eventually because obviously we have more parts that need to go on here yet but you can kind of see where it goes for the cowling so we'll set that off over there at this point this stage is done note i still have now five pieces of um exhaust tube so we'll just set that off for now and move on to stage number 14 
All right, so we got stage number 14. In this stage, we are going to complete the other side of that engine cowling we did in stage 13, from what I can see. Come on now, all right. This is what we got. More exhaust tubes, more flaps there for on the other side of the engine cowling, and then there's the retainer for it. So I think we're going to be doing the same exact thing we did on the last uh, stage. So I'm hoping we have to attach some of these exhaust parts though, because we're accumulating. That's three more. So we have plenty of ex exhaust. Throw that off to the side. Now let's get smart this time. We're going to open this baggie of screws first, because we know we're going to need three of these. Let's go ahead and dump those out a while. Come on now. There we go. Put one back in the baggie so we have a spare. Set that off on the side. We're going to take this part that we just did in stage 13, where we had these adjustable flaps, and we're going to do the same exact thing on the opposite side. Now this time, they're numbered instead of lettered. So if we look, we have the number one, and there's the number five. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one through four. So one, two, three, four. There's number two. One, two, three, four. And these are the, going to be the ones that we attach in this case. And then five is going to be that one that's fixed um, up here. Okay. So, just double check. So we're going to hold it like so. And we're just going to put these on like this. Just like we did last time. We're going to set them in place. And then we're going to use that retainer over top and screw it fast. So we'll just set those like that. Easy peasy. Take our retainer. Remember, we have the positive side up in this case. Just going to set that like so. All right, and then screw these in place. Simple enough. And once you get one on there pretty snug, then you don't have to worry about holding it in place anymore because it's just seated in there really nicely. I do like this way of, of hinging things with the retaining piece. It's kind of nice actually, rather than using a pin. Sometimes pins can be a little finicky, like we saw on Optimus the other day. Okay. So now we have our four, they're nice and snug, so we can move them, but they're not like, you know, flapping all over. When I go like this, they shouldn't move, right? But if I go like this, they should move, okay? Now, this last one, just like before, this is uh, number five, right? So we have the number five down there. Yeah, this one's gonna go right here. Yep, just right there. So just here. So then we're going to put some CA on it though to make sure that it stays in its place. Okay. So let's try just putting a little bit more. We're actually going to put it in here this time because uh, just putting on the peg alone was a little weak last time. So put that right there in that hole. Put that there. And it rests against this little peg here, which is really nice actually for, for lining it up. That was a really good move by the designers there. So let's give it a little bit of accelerator and let it, let it solidify there. Okay. And there we are. Looks pretty good if I do say so. Now the next step, it is going to have us take um, these parts here, so it says glue the parts assembled in three, which is step three, that's this, um, onto the assembly from stage 11, which is this here. It just has to glue it, that's interesting. So let's find the pegs. So there's three pegs here, according to this anyway, that are sticking out, that we need to align this to. Okay, so here's one. So you guys can see that. Let me just zoom in. This is a pretty big part, but still, 
might be hard to see. There's a pig right there. Let me see it with my finger. There's a lot of silver here. Look at that pig. We got one there. And then... So I found those two. Oh, here's the other one down here. Okay. So those must have been the bees. They had to have been. That's interesting. I didn't notice they had a little pig on the back of them. Okay. I noticed the ones on the front. Oh, wait. It's the same thing, but on the front. Duh. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So we're going to glue We're gonna glue these in place. So we got to find where these match up because there's only one way that it can work. And it's going to match up. I guess the easiest way to do is like we have this flat spot here that already exists on the front. We're just going to match that up here. It's probably going to be the best way to do it. Let's just double check that our pegs line up that way. And they do. At least there's a peg on that one. Let's see. Is there pegs on everything that it lines up? We got one there. Okay. We got one there. That's good. So two of them line up. That's two. As long as we get two, that should. I mean, it's a circle, or pretty darn close to a circle, so two pegs should mean that we're lined up. And there's a third peg there. Is that lined up? And it is. Okay, so what we're going to do, since we have them lined up, we're going to put a little bit of dab of CA on these pegs. Right, like so. I don't want that air bubble to burst. Send glue everywhere. There we go. So there's only three pegs, but there's four holes. That's interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so that one goes there. That one goes there. Alright, and then once those two are down, this one goes here. Let's line up this time. Come on. We gotta go that way. Okay, there we go. Now, now we are all lined up. So now we're just gonna hold this here while it dries. This is slow dry, but we gotta be careful because we want it to make sure we, it dries in place. Or else this ain't gonna work very well. Yep. If only I had a third pair of hands. If only I had a third pair of hands. Put that glue right there. And huh? There. Right there. Here? On this? Right there. Where my fingertips pointing. In there. Where I'm holding it together. No. Up there. Right there. There you go. All right, that's good. Thanks, honey. Uh -huh. All right, so we have all that in place. I'm just gonna give this another, yeah. This has kicker in it now, but it needs just a touch more of that glue because it is not holding in place. The only thing I want to watch is I don't want to glue myself to it, otherwise known as pulling an Ian. There we go. Now it's solid. Okay. And we got some kicker all over the place, but don't worry. This, at least the stuff that I'm using anyway, which is nothing fancy, just like generic. Uh, accelerant doesn't really hurt nothing that I've ever put it on anyway I mean I put it on a lot of stuff and it's never eaten paint or anything off so I don't expect it to this time either and we have that on there so now that's attached and then from there the next step is to take this exhaust piece and we're actually going to attach this finally so the question is where and how. So actually we're going to take it like so. 
Oh no it is. No wait. No, it's with this part sticking out, yeah. With this part sticking out, this is going to go towards the flat spot down here. Interesting. Oh, so I think the easy way to, to look at this is you have a peg here and a peg here. Or female end. That's how we're going to line them up. And these don't get glued. This is going to get screwed. So we're just going to do our best to kind of line that up there. Especially when you can't see it. That's kind of tough. So it's it's like this. So like that, that little nub is on, I need a better pointer like this uh, toothpick here. Right here is where that nub is that we were just looking at on the back side, right? It's right there. Ooh, right there. So we're just going to try to line the back of that up as close as we can there. Um, at least get pretty darn close. So I have a feeling these line up with the holes in all the engines, or the cylinders too, because it is the exhaust. So I'm also looking, if you look through here, you can see like a little hole there. We have holes in the back of the exhaust here for the big pipes. So it does seem that that's the way we got to line it up. There's a lot of holes to line up. It's a good thing they give you that mounting block for the center, or these would never line up. Gosh, we we'll lucky if they do line up. For sure, I see a lot of them are clo oh gosh, I just see what I did there. Okay, I just smashed one of these lines. Okay, let's uh, try moving that line out of the way. There we go. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys just saw that, but I hit one of the lines that we put in earlier in this pack. I mean, it's fine, it's just I smushed it and that's why it wasn't going into where we're supposed to go into. So essentially line all these up. Oh boy, trying to get all these to go into place is going to be interesting. It's almost like you have to push each one in individually. Unless I'm off by something, which I very well could be. Am I off? Okay, yeah, I was off by one. So, it looks like these all go on the left side holes. So, like, in the back of each cylinder, there's two holes. If I, if I can show you, there's a hole here and a hole over there. So, we're going to line everything up on the left side hole. At least that's what looks right, because I can't go any other direction or else this piece in here won't line up so actually here's a here we can see it there's nothing in the way right so you can see that there's a hole here and a hole here we're going on this hole and then there's a hole here and a hole there so we gotta go on that hole lots of holes to fill oh look at that and when you actually do it right it just pops right into place you guys heard that everything just popped right where it was supposed to so let's just double check everything's lined up Okay, so on the left hole. Yep. There we go. And that's how it goes into place. And then there actually is two of these screws. Um, these same screws that we used, I think it's the same ones that we just used to attach the last step. I believe it was those. Okay, no, it's not. These are different screws. Was there another thing of screws in this pack? It happens sometimes that you lose the screws or don't have them. Let's see. Nope. Oh, they came with stage 10, which would be these guys. It's important if you read instructions. Okay, got two of those. And then we're just going to go ahead and set these in place here. No. 
You know, it's actually easier to just put them in place with the tweezers, I think, because they're so tiny. And then use the uh, magnetic screwdriver to put them in place. Alright, there we go. So then here, you can attach that down. Alright. And make sure while you're holding your motor that you hold it by this frame. Because if you hold it by anything else, you risk breaking parts off. I think I actually did break one of the connecting arms off earlier. Or the connecting hoses, not arms. Alright, I can hear it like kind of popping into place. Which is nice to hear. Or maybe things are moving. It's almost like some of these plastic parts are moving since I'm tightening. Eh, it moved. I thought so. You want to make sure as you're tightening this down that these are all aligned with their holes or else they're going to fight you as you're tightening the screws down. Like I just noticed there. I, what, I, what I felt was some resistance. And then I heard it snap. It wasn't like snapping like something was breaking, but just like something was moving as I was tightening it. And I did that. We can tighten some more. And what that's doing is it's actually pulling the hoses into the cylinders. And I get a good tight fit there. I'm just taking my time. I'm going back and forth between the two screws because we're essentially tightening one half and then the other half. And if we only tighten one half at a time, what's going to happen is you're going to get things a little lopsided. So here we have one that's popping out of its spot. Let's push it back. Come on, into your hole. There you go. Into your hole. There we go. Snapped in. There's a lot of pressure on them because those screws are essentially flexing them into position. And what's interesting is there's a lot of given this thing on the one side anyway okay I think are they all lined up now nope you can hear it snapping as I'm just applying a little bit of pressure and making sure they're popping into place just going around this motor you're gonna get really familiar with every part of this motor then we're just gonna snug it up a little bit more now because I feel like I popped a lot more into place See if there's any more room for snugging it. Nope. It's pretty much as tight as it's going to go. So I think with that I'm checking these outside ones now. I think everything's popped into place. No more pressure pushing it out. Very good. Alright. That looks really good folks. I think it looks really nice. It looks like a really nice engine. Alright. So, oh, and look at here. So, in this same stage, we're going to be putting on the exhaust. So, all right. The one thing with these is that there's uh, there's no part number, but there is a, a number. Like there, there's a part number in the book, but it doesn't necessarily correspond with the number on here. At least I don't think it does. I could be wrong. So, okay, no, I'm not wrong. So, like for example, this number seven is called out as number 1404 as the part number so which is just the stage and the part in the in the stage so that being said they do give you pictures in the instructions showing you like what this one is so we have um, eight seven six and five heck this one has an A on it <laughs> A7 bingo all right so we have ones with letters and we have ones with numbers. We should probably separate those. So we got A, B, that looks like a one. I probably should have kept them separate to start with, but it's okay. They're all numbered or lettered in this case as well. So it's no big deal. What's that one? A B, okay. So, all right. We have the numbers. And what it's saying is that we want to take... Um, in this case, the, the first round is we're going to look at the engine like so. So we have the bigger gap on the bottom, little gap on top, and we're just going to hold this. And we want numbers 4, 3, 2, and 1, which are these guys. These are the numbered ones. 
four, three, two, and one. So there's two, four, three, and one. So we want these ones here. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take number four to start, which is this guy here. Yep, number four to start, and we're going to match it up to um, no to the cylinders. Okay, so there's specific ones that we have to match though. So if we look, this one here. Uh, well, you know what? Maybe we should start on the other ends because this kind of starts in the middle. Or actually, it starts up top here. But I'd almost prefer to start somewhere else. So I can see we have these little nubs sticking out. So I have a feeling it has something to do with that. Yeah. So let's start on the other end. So we have these four. Let's start with this one here. This one has two pipes. Okay, and we can see that one's longer than the other, so this should make some sense here in a moment. So we're gonna start this one here is all the way down here, and it looks to me from what I can see we would want to do it's the long end, the long one on the left, the short one on the right. And if we look at it down here, it would have to go here and here. There's just no other place for it. So we have a little hole down here, a little hole right here. Well, big hole I should say right there. Little holes on the bottom, big hole on top. And we're just going to put that in place like so. Okay, it does not say to glue. They actually snap right in. You heard that? Snap right in. So start with this one here just because it's easy to remember like you have right here straight line it's wide open then from there we go to number two so one to two which makes sequential order as well number two so this is uh, a shorter one so this one's gonna go you can see the hole right there it's gonna go right there the other thing is as we put them down in there it should also snap into this ring in the middle as I had pointed out just a moment ago Put it in like that. There. It should also snap. See that? How it's like snaps against this smaller pointer. This little peg here. So we have hole, hole. In this case it's in this hole right here. This one here. It's in this hole and we have this little peg. Kind of hold it in place. And it's nice because you don't have to use glue then. Okay, so then move on to number uh, three which is a longer one. Okay, so it seems much longer, so that means we're going down to the bottom. So if we can see down there, if not, we can always look over from the side, and you guys can see what I'm looking at, which is right here. There's a hole right there. Let's just kind of wedge that against that ring. Okay, maybe, wait, wait, right there. There. There we go. And there's another exhaust. And then we have this piece here. Another short one. This is number four. And again, right there is our hole on the top cylinder. Or I should say the one closest to us, not necessarily the top. You can see how that fits in right there. Real nice. Beautiful. Okay, you can, I'm assuming you can put CA on these. Uh, you can glue them into place if you want to. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to. One thing I will uh, do, because this is exhaust, is uh, we'll come back and we'll paint those black on the inside so they actually look like they're hollow. And again, as, because they're exhaust, maybe we play around with some cool uh, exhaust effects on these. I mean, they already have like a nice kind of, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. It's not, it's not a silver. It's got a little bit of that, like exhaust goldish color to it. I don't know what the right color term is. You guys can tell me in the comments if you know. But basically it's just a different color than just silver. So continuing on in this direction we're going to place the other ones here. So we have um, that's going to be another long one and this one's going to be let's see here we have 14 
1406, no wait, no. 1401, which is number five. That's this guy, number five. This one goes next here. Very long one. So this is nice. It actually just continues on the line in the next stage, or stage, next section, I should say, not next stage. You guys can see this. Be down below again, just popping that into place. Okay, so. Hmm. You know what we're going to have to do? Can we bend that out? See, it's a long one, but this one here doesn't bend out because it's fixed. So, we're going to have to... We bent this one here out so we can get in here. We're going to have to kind of finagle this over there without breaking it. As you can see there's a little hole there we got to get it to line up on and we can't be nice if we could move this one out of the way It'd be nice if that one was adjustable but it's not that one is glued in place so boy we are off by just the slightest little amount isn't that how it always goes but we'll get it here in just a moment come on plastic work with me There we go. Hold on. Hold on. No! Oh gosh, that's a disaster. That's a disaster. Alright, don't worry. We're going to CA that back together. So, what happened is, right where the hole is, as I was flexing it over there, it actually broke right on the nub. So, what we're going to do, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to cut that nub off. We're just going to cut that nub a little short. That's what we're going to do. That's going to be the better approach, I think, than trying to force this thing over. Because it, it started like it's on the end of the nub, but we're going to be better off if we don't don't mess with that and I think it actually it might have even said in there to be you know to basically if you had to do this just do it if you had to cut these little nubs short I probably should have like read that first so we're gonna cut that nub just a little bit shorter we just need it to stick on the end mm -mm -mm. Okay. now Hey, 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 hey. When disaster strikes, folks. It's almost like it doesn't just does not want to move into that position, like there's something blocking it or something. There's nothing touching it that I can see. Oh wait. I know what it is. It's the Oh now. It's this line down here. It was fighting me because this line was in the way. So we're going to just move this. Oh, come on now. This line underneath there. That's what was blocking it. Okay. Let's put that back in place. Well, you know what? We already have it out. Let's put it back together so we get that taken care of. All right, so now we have two whole pieces here. You can see it just it snapped right where that hole was. No big deal. No big deal. Just gotta make sure we put it back the same way, or else we're gonna have a backwards exhaust piece. So now the question is, which way was it? I think it was like that. 
look at our reference photo. Looks like it went like that. Yeah, just like that. Go ahead and put some kicker on there. Get that nice and sealed up. No, why would you do that? Ay, ay, ay. Hey, that's definitely right there. Oh gosh. At least it was right. It was right the first time I put it down anyway. Kicker works well for a short time. Oh, come on now. We're going to come in on the left side this time of that piece. Yep. Okay. So we don't have that little thing in the way anymore. Okay, now we need to get this inside of here. The problem is I'm in the same exact boat as I just was. Let's try shortening this by just the slightest little bit. The only other thing I can think of is that it's just a hair too long. All the other ones snapped right into place, no problems. This one is just, it's like, it's just too high. Because then when I tried to push it into place is when it snapped on me. Now granted I pushed it from up here, which might have been the mistake, but instead of pushing it from down here. It just does not want to go into that spot though. That's no big deal because that was just a nub glued on. We're just destroying this. Oh gosh, and now this. No, wait. Did it break again? Oh gosh. This is just getting out of hand now. Alrighty, folks. So here's what I ended up doing. So I got that bottom half of that piece in. And I got it lined up. So you can see it, it's attached here. And I just lined it up underneath this pin that I had shortened up earlier in an attempt to try to get the fit. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a Davisier right here. And we're going to attach the top half of the exhaust piece that we busted. And that should fit right into place over top of that like so like I said it should if it wants to if it's feeling it that day you know even exhaust has a bad day right so let's try that again because I think that might have been my issue if I had it backwards like so. Gosh, do I even have anything there to attach it to? But like that. I just feel like this thing wants to fight with me at this point. There we go. I don't think you're going to notice that from the outside at all. I think it looks like it's supposed to be there. 
just like that. And if we have any issues, we can always just break it off later and put it back on. But now the one thing we do have to do, because we do break this piece off, is put, put this piece back on. Because we snapped that off earlier, so. Go ahead and put that back in place. Gotta make sure we get that right where it was. Oh, come on now. Too much super glue. Because the nub we had to align it is now busted off, so. I'm gonna put that back. Use that little peg that we had as kind of a backstop and then just set her on down in place where it was. And in a moment. Okay, maybe a moment and a half. We're gonna be good to go. Let's just give it some accelerant to be safe. That's how we repair <laughs> a screw up that I make. So nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes when we're modeling, and that's what makes them ours. Let's see. Even with that open. Unless you're shining a light right in there, you're not really going to notice that piece. And if we have to, we can always doctor it up later, but you can, al you can already see there's like little holes, and these are the ones that are good, so we can always paint them up later if we want to. But there we go. Back together. And now we're going to continue on with the rest of the exhaust, since we only did one of those. Alright, so, moving on we have... Um, 1403, which is number 6. It says number 6. But I'm pretty sure I saw letters on these. Am I missing something? That's definitely A, B. Well, that's an 8. Okay, so I have, I have an 8. And I have a 7. Interesting. But that's definitely a B. That's definitely an A. And that's definitely a C. Oh! What's this back here hiding? That looks like a 6. Alright. So that's important. Alright, so the next one we're going to do is number 6. So, same thing. This is a short one, so we're going to attach that right there in that hole. And hopefully not bust anything out this time. Please, can we not bust anything off this time? Please, okay. We're in there and, oh gosh. We just glued that piece on, oh, there we go. Kind of like shoehorned into place there. You have like two exhausts right next to each other. There we go. Now, the next one is the number seven, that's this guy here. This one's a long, another long one. We're going to just continue on down the line. This one goes way down in there. And let's shorn you in here. Now it's weird that it, like it's the, it seems to be a struggle. There we go. You gotta like twist it. You see, I'm like twisting it into there in the position, or at least that that's how it's working anyway. And the last one here is number eight. At least the last one for, for this little round. We have more exhausts here. But um, this one's another short one. What's interesting is kind of like you put it in there and then you twist it onto here. Oh, see now that one broke off. And I, I barely touched that. See, I feel like, I feel like they should have uh, left these off until this step. These shouldn't have been attached because they're just in the way and you can like these are so bad you can bend them out of the way right? These they should have left them off so uh, my advice is if you decide to build this uh, part work kit from Agora definitely um, put these uh, these fixed pieces of the engine cowling here uh, put them on last do not put them on, or not when I say last, I mean after this step. Put these exhaust pieces in place, then add 
then add this last piece. So we want to have something else in the line here because we don't have a peg anymore. So let's let's use gravity to our advantage first. Get that guy up. We'll use that as one edge, kind of, and then yeah. Let's get that into alignment. Let it dry a little bit. Hit it with some accelerant. Yeah, I, I, that would be my advice, or maybe Agora wants to update their instructions if they haven't already. I, I would, I would take these two out, uh, or, or not put them in until these exhaust pipes are in. All right, so now we have all those in place. It looks really good. We have the last two here, A, B, and C, to finish out the exhaust, which I'm so happy about because I. I think actually at this point we're going to have all the parts off the workbench. At least when I say off the workbench, I mean no loose parts, which I'm a huge fan of. So, <clears throat> ABC. All right, so we guys go. So as we continue on, it's CBA. Okay. So these are all double ones. So we have a long one and a short one, which is interesting. So snaps there, no wait, what am I doing, snaps there, because it's down below, there and there, it's easier to see this way with your light, for sure, okay, top one, is that top hole, right there, I feel like there's something in my way there. Is it that little wire? Let's move you over. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. We got that guy. We got that guy. I feel like there's something else in my way here. It's weird. Oh, wait. It's because... Okay, I, I'm dumb. It says ABC and I'm putting C where A goes. That would be why. I have them backwards. Sorry about that. So I should have noted that. I noticed this as I was putting them in, so it actually has the numbers around, in this case, the letters. So it would help if it was the right one. Okay, so this makes more sense. So, because we have... Here we go. That makes more sense. Also explain why it's, like, fighting me. We have A. And then down below... Let's start with the long one, maybe. That'll work better, because I seem to be struggling to get it. There, there. Oh, wow, look at that. Pop right into place. And then, well, at least it popped there in place in one, two spots, actually. What about down here? Did it go too far? No, it needs to go this way. Just a hair. There we go. Now, now we're in position. There we go. Now that's seated right. Okay, so now then we're we're at B. So I'm trying to like look at the instructions and figure out which ones go where. And then I'm not looking like duh, it's right here. Just can't believe I missed that. So B, this is a single guy, a long one. So we're gonna drop down here. Oh gosh. So many things. It's pretty tight. I can see why they like started either combining exhausts or what. As you can see, a few of them are single exhausts and some are combined. And I can see why they would have combined exhausts when they designed this engine. Because there's just not enough room in here. Um, okay, yeah, we're going to have to come in from the other side. Uh, the peg up top, I think. Um, yeah. How in the world? There, okay, so that that gets that on, but now not on the bottom. Whew. This one is a tough one. It's because you got you got this piece here where it's hinged in the way, and the peg's right there. So you kind of gotta like. Oof. Oof. All right. So I think what we're gonna do. We're going to trim this guy down, because we only need a little nub 
to fit them on. I just don't think it's going to fit. And I don't want to risk breaking another one of these. We barely survived that last round. Let's see if this helps at all. Come on. Alright, I think we're lined up. We give it a little push. Are we lined up? It certainly looks like I'm lined up. Unless I'm too far that way. Boy, I tell you what. I don't know where I'm... Is that better? I feel like I'm like right on it, but it's not going in. Ah. Wow, okay. Um, we still don't have enough wiggle room there for that thing. I mean, see how close they are. This, one, this one's really tight. Let's try sniffing some more off of there. Oh gosh, I just don't. I, I just don't know what else to do. Just keep cutting some of this nub off till we get down to nothing left, and we'll have to just use CA to kind of fill it. But I don't know if if, if this is in the way, if if this wire is in the way. Let's try moving that out of the way. But I feel like that wasn't the case. I feel like really what's in the way is this piece of the cowling. Yeah, like I mean look at that, I can't even get an angle on it where it will actually go in. Boy, this is awful. I feel like this part of this one cylinder is like just in the way and there's just nothing I can do about it. Oh, okay, well if I spin it into place then it works. Okay, I spun it into place. Now we're going to spin this guy back around. Please? Actually, if I can move it... This is what is so odd to me. I spun it in... No, wait. Yeah, it'd be like that. Duh, that's why it's not working. Okay. Let's get it on its little nub. Then we'll be good. There we go. I'm just going to put a dab of CA there. We'll just use some thin stuff because I don't need anything crazy. Just want to make sure that stays in place since I cut that nub down. So what I did, if you could see that, it might have been really hard to see on camera. I actually stuck it down in and I actually spun it until it kind of like spun into position. So that was a, a bit of a pain. And then this is the last piece here of our exhaust and this is a short and a long one. So let's end on a good note, please. Can we make this an easy one? I'd really appreciate that. Cause I kind of got excited because the first one just like popped right into place and I was like, oh boy, and then the second one went into place. And we got to this side of the engine and it's like, oh boy, all right, snap right into place. Um, it, wait a sec, did I snap the nub off that it went against? What is that? Or is, I definitely did, the nub's gone. Or at least what was a nub is gone. It just kind of broke off. So we'll just put a dab of CA in there. We use a thick CA. Just so we have something holding it in place here. No big deal. I'd rather break a nub off than break the exhaust off like earlier. My goodness. So this was definitely a challenging piece here for sure. So let me just take a little bit of that out. 
I like to use cotton swabs quite often in this stuff. Works really well. Let's put a little bit of that stuff in there. And that should hold that in place real nice. Come on now. Hard enough on me. Come on. Alright. Whew. And after all that work, we can finally, after all that all that work, oh my gosh, so much work. Let me just zoom out of here so we can take a look at this together. Alright, after all that work, we finally have an engine with exhausts all the way around. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful engine. Alright, looks really good. I think that looks really nice. And then we can actually put our engine cowling in place. So again, the engine cowling comes apart. And then, let's see, how does this go together? So this part is... Can we even... Can, oh gosh. Does this... Okay, yeah, so we have a flat spot here. So... Oh, duh. Yeah, actually, anyway, I, put, I just put this on like a moment ago, didn't I? Like a, a stage or two ago? And I was like, oh yeah, this is how it's going to go on here. And then I go to put it on, I'm like, how do I do this? I guess I just got ahead of myself. There we go. Nice magnetic cover. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. That looks so nice. All the way around. Uh, it's not held together with screws. It's uh, this engine cowling like you just saw. It's, it's magnetic. It's magnetic. Just pop that on there. Now the next step is actually, while we're at this, we're going to put the propeller on from stage number one. Just attach that on the end of that shaft. Just be careful when we do this. We don't want to damage anything. We're just going to put it on there nice and gently until it's seated back against there. Okay, everything should be seated in place nicely like so and we have ourselves a propeller let's just zoom out of here have ourselves a little propeller and that is stage 14 complete but one thing I think we can do that I don't think is mentioned in here nope it's not necessarily mentioned but we should do it at this stage in my opinion especially since we have this all assembled now they give us this battery pack and my wife was so kind to go get us some batteries a little while ago. And we're just going to pop them in place. And do, 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 do. get to this point. Alright, and then we have a little on-off switch. This is just for testing. There's no cover for this. This is just for testing uh, the parts as we go. So let's what we're going to do is uh, plug this end in. like a, It's like the opposite end of a headphone jack. Plug that in, and then we're going to press the on button and see what happens. We should have a little fan for our desk. And we turn the on button on, and... Whoa, it's a little stiff. Oh, it's a lot stiff. Hold on. There we go. Look at there. Like that, we have a fan going. That is so cool. That is so neat. There's actually... Uh, Nice breeze behind it, obviously, because that's where the air is blowing, just like real propellers. So we don't have a good fan, but we have a good air sucker. That's so cool. It works. We have liftoff. All right. It's still going. I turned it off. It's still going. So cool. We do have one more stage here to complete, but that is stage 14 complete, and I'm very happy that our motor worked clearly we put all the exhaust and fuel lines in the right place or else this wouldn't have worked <laughs> that's very important all right we're going to set that off on the side for now because uh, it actually still says building the engine is the next step so let's let's find out uh exactly what we're doing uh, by grabbing stage 15 and uh here's stage 15 so we actually have um I think 
there, uh, there's some electrical parts in here, some other things. Let's just go ahead and cut it open. Let's be careful when we cut this open because there's wires in here, so we can't just do the normal slash and yank like we do on other packs. All right, that's everything out there. Pack 15. All right. All right, so there are a lot of little parts in this uh, in this stage. So a lot of little parts. We also have this this guy here, which almost looks like a plug of some sort to me. So we also have this guy here, which looks like a rotating mechanism, like a clutch or something. Um, but I don't know for sure. Um, it doesn't actually rotate though, so it's just for show, whatever it is. All right, so the step one, we're just literally gonna snap some parts together and glue them. So we have these two parts here that are simply gonna snap together. And we're gonna glue. The reason we're using CA and not uh, styrene cement is because this plastic is actually ABS plastic and not uh, styrene which is kind of nice actually. It's very strong. Just snap that together like that. Okay, and then the next step, same thing, but with, where's that piece at? This piece here. We're gonna take this piece, snap that together. These are pretty small parts. Let me just zoom in a hair for you guys. All right, so just gonna snap these parts together with some CA glue on them first. So just a dab. And this is just to hold them. They kind of snap into place, but just to make sure that they don't fall out later. Boom, snap right in. And then we have this block here, which will also house them. So we have another round peg into a hexagon hole which everything I was always taught says that's not possible but apparently in plastic modeling it is so forget everything you know about common sense manufacturing all right and do, 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 do. snap those together kind of there we go. Kind of feels backwards, but when I say backwards, I feel like I should have attached those these parts to this, then kind of build it out. We kind of build it from the outside in. So either way, there's a part. I don't know what part it is, but you know what? I don't like this seam on here. Let's just take a little bit of CA, some some thin stuff and put that on the insides. I'm just gonna make sure that seals up real nice. I feel like this the whole this whole part here, this black part, is not sticking to this silver part like I wanted to. So we're gonna clean that up too while we're at it. That's looking better. Let's just put a little bit of this thin stuff. That's why it's nice to have a, a mix of thin and thick CA at your workbench. Sometimes you want something with a little capillary action. Sometimes you want, well, sometimes you want thicker stuff, maybe to fill gaps or whatnot. Nope, okay, I was wrong. This one wasn't ready yet. All right, let's try that again. Best thing we can do is just dump a little bit of accelerant in there. And this stuff just turns it rock hard within a matter of a second, but don't get it on your fingers or you glue yourself fast like that. That's the downside to thin. CA. Thin CA is very, very good at the capillary action stuff and it will stick to your fingers and you won't even feel it until it hardens up and you feel your skin turning to rock. And then it gets stuck to your model. Alright, there we go. That looks good. Now we have one of these small parts to attach. These are really, really tiny parts. And, I mean, really tiny for a big scale. I mean, these are nothing compared to some of the little photo etch parts on my interior tanks, but still. 
um, small for something this size. For a 1 18th scale, I mean, heck, my 1 16th scale tanks, which is uh, com comparable. Well, a tank, I only built one 1 16th scale. I have more in the stash to make, but either way, I digress. The smallest parts on those are probably about this size, too, so that's a small part for that. Snaps right into place. And then we take this, what looks like a switch, and we're going to place that down inside here. So, this is going to, so this round silver part here is going to go down in. And then there's also, like a, you can see there's like three prongs there. So we want the prongs facing this way, because there's a notch out there for them. We're just going to put them down in there. We're not going to glue them down in place. But, okay, I see. So this is kind of like, <laughs> I said this is like a clutch, but it doesn't work. But uh, <laughs> little did I know, uh, it may be exactly that or something that spins, because we're going to be attaching it into there. Whatever it is, something's going in there. I don't know what. And that's kind of what fascinates me about this build specifically. Again, I'm no airplane guy, but this is so cool. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to set this like this. These guys we want to kind of shove down. We want to make sure we have these wires. Uh, if we look at it this way, we want to have them kind of down, coming down in here, out of the way. So we'll just split them a little bit with this red one. We, we want them coming out of the bottom this way. Like when I say the bottom, I mean on the bottom of my screen. We want them coming this way here. And this is what it shows in the instructions. So that's what I'm sharing. It's essentially what they're telling me in the instructions is to bring the wires over like so. And not break them obviously. Don't want to do that. So we want to be careful with that, how we handle those. Let's just split these a little bit. We can go over that way a little more with the red. There we go. That's how they show them in the drawing. Right like that. Because we have um, this next piece to put on. So, we just kind of set this off to the side for now, and we're going to grab a hold of these other pieces we have. So we have this, this is the cover, but there's some pieces we need to put on first. So specifically, there's a piece, um, this black piece here, this is going to go on right in here, and this is going to get glued in, so we're going to put a dab of CA on here. And then it's a D-shaped hole, so we kind of can't screw it up. Put that in place. Snap. I like the snap of approval. And once that's on, then we can go back and grab our part here. And we're going to put this into place. So with our wires where we want them to be, just take notice there's a hole in the bottom here for the wires. That's why we want the wires to come out here on the bottom, not towards the side there. Yeah, so I kind of want them to go like that there. So they're coming out together. Nope, I'm, I'm pinching that wire in there. I don't like it. What we need to do is get that wire down. Get that wire down. Now. See what's happening is this red wire is getting pinched in here. So we take our trusty tweezers. Just move things out of the way. Till we get things lined up where they should be. Okay. 
So those holes are lined up now. I don't see anything blocking it. Everything seems to be in position, so nothing blocking it at all. And once we have that in position, is it here? I, I feel like these, like, yeah, they like sit inside. So like, something's not right here. I feel like something's crooked down here maybe. There, that wasn't down all the way. That's why it was stick, sticking up. Okay, now let's try that again. Like there sh I'm like, there shouldn't be a gap there. That just doesn't look right. There we go, and now we have nice closed on all edges that's what we were looking for okay now that we have that in place we are going to use the 1509 screws which I think are the ones that we just came with this this set here and we will I'll tell you what we'll just use this here to put them in place like so there we go All right, wire management is always like a tricky thing, especially if you're not used to managing wires. And, and in this case, you don't really have like a conduit you're dealing with. You're just kind of trying to force them to go where you need them to. And you got to be careful you don't break them or anything like that. So now, I'm not sure what this does. Is this like, I don't, I don't know if it should spin or something, but we do have a tester end and we do have a tester. I can plug it in and see what happens. Okay, nothing happens at all. So I don't know what it does. Uh, my guess is something plugs into this and it gets power from this because it looks almost like another kind of port or plug if you will all right we still have a few more parts here left yet we have these parts here which we have two parts that look they look identical yeah these parts are identical they are identical same part and then what's different is between these two parts. So essentially we just attach one part to each uh, piece here and they mount on this this nub here. So the triangle part kind of faces this direction and then the nub it just goes right over top of there like so. And then we can put a little bit of CA in there. In this case we can use a thin because it's a little bit of capillary action going on there. And then we can just hit it with some accelerant just to be careful. Make sure it hardens up right away. And we, we're good. It's hard. The other one, we can do it with thick CA. Why not? Just show that you can do it with both. But again, it's nice to have it's nice to have thick and thin CA on your workbench. Just snug right up in there. There we go. All set.
So we have these two parts. And then these are going to attach right onto the piece that we just made. And I go in these holes right there and there. Um, let's see. I think they kind of tilt outwards. So like, if we look at it, if we did this, I don't think that's really going to work, right? Because it does, yeah, you got to tilt them outwards because these are these pegs here are made a certain way. But they actually go, whoops, yeah, they go this direction, so it'd be like, like that, and then mirror on the other side. So, in this case, they do not get glued, so we can attach this here, these just snap into place, like so. And it does say that we can now test the motor using this. So I was right. This is like a connecting point for power. This thing is. So what it's saying, I think this is maybe another, I'm not sure. Would this be air intake? I, I, I don't know. But it's basically saying that we can attach... Oh, this is going to attach. So we have a, a little through spot here. That's going to attach right there, I think. No? No, wait. No, wait, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Oh. At least that's how it looks. I don't know. Am I wrong? I just heard it snap, though. I just heard it snap. It doesn't say anything about um, installing it like this, but I just felt it snap. And it's because you got this female end and that male end coming together. So let's see if we do it the instructional way to test it. Let's see if it still works like we would expect. So that's why we were like, oh, it didn't do anything when I plugged it in earlier because it's not what it's meant to do. All right, let's see here. Let me zoom out for you folks. Do, 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 do. All right, now we have it hooked up the way we did the other ones. Make sure it still works. And we have liftoff, yay. So I didn't break them wires, everything's good. We have a working propeller. It looks really good. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for uh, for me for today. That's stage 15 of Agora Zero Fighter. We have a completely built engine. We have beautiful, beautiful propellers, exhaust, an engine cowling, flaps here. So we can actually take this cowling off at any time we want and see the inside of that engine. Very nice. Or we can cover it up. I kind of I kinda like that idea. Like I said, for my interior tanks, I think that's a really nice uh, feature to be able to pop it on and off much easier. Something for me to think about for future. But um, there we have it, folks. We have a full working engine after 15 stages. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like this version where I'm giving you commentary from the workbench. And uh, let me know down in the comments if you do. Uh, like what I'm doing here and you want to see more as I continue to build this airplane, uh, definitely subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And give me a like if you did like what you saw today. Thank you guys.